Undoubtedly, the talk of the town this week is all about Google Gemini, a multimodal model from the ground up that can take any input and produce any output. Now, a control demo like this is super cool, but imagine pointing Google Gemini at the world. Gemini to me depicts the missing pieces required to realize that science fiction future of computing depicted in movies like her. So in this video, I wanna do a quick TLDR on multimodal AI and Google's insane data mode. So in this demo that went absolutely viral, you can see Gemini reasoning about events happening over time across imagery, audio, and of course, text. Now, whether it's sorting cups, analyzing full motion smartphone videos, and my personal favorite, generating 80s red metal, it doesn't really matter if it's the real or digital world this model can do it all. In other words, an AI model like Gemini could be that ultimate real world assistant and digital companion rolled into one. Sounds a lot like Jarvis. You could stream through your desktop, record off your camera, or heck, even push to it live through your AR glasses and talk to it. Or if Joaquin Phoenix is more your speed, perhaps your phone tucked away in your pocket with an elegant Bluetooth earbud to complete that dreamer look. I don't think we fully grok all the use cases unlocked by this paradigm. Need help with that tricky Blender or Photoshop tutorial? Gemini could analyze each step, identify mistake, and suggest improvements. Want to learn how to play that killer Metallica riff? redecorate your room in real time, get feedback on your web design as you're creating it, all of this is possible and so much more. So how could Gemini work so well for both real and digital scenarios? Google has a tremendous data mode and they sure as hell plan to use it. Remember, Google owns search, maps, YouTube, photos, and that's just scratching the surface. Google possesses the most complete models of the physical and the digital world. We're talking about an endless stream of fresh and historical websites, real world imagery, tutorials, how-tos, video essays, podcasts, and yes, gaming and dance videos too. Now look, Tesla has really cool real world data. Meta has a wild lens into the social and status substrate of the world, but YouTube by itself, which you're watching this video on, is by far the most ubiquitous repository of audio, visual, and text data on the internet. Nothing even comes close. It is thus unsurprising that it was rumored that once OpenAI ran out of all the text on the internet, they went about scraping podcasts off of YouTube. In other words, the potential gain from scraping all the text on the internet is nearing its limits. This is exactly what a bunch of open source models doing. There's only so much alpha you can extract from there. Multimodality represents the next phase and Gemini is all in on this paradigm from the get-go. And it may well be the only way Google can attempt to leapfrog OpenAI that has quite a head start with GPT-4, and who knows how far along they are with GPT-5. So Google says Gemini is built from the ground up for multimodality, reasoning seamlessly across text, images, video, audio, and code. Now I want my AI agent to be able to reason about all of these things, whether it's my video game session, my 3D content creation session, or heck, even doing a fit check like in this demo. Now, multimodal from the ground up, meaning it's not just a bunch of smaller models duct taped together. The GPT-4 vision style approach does work well to describe images, but it can struggle with more complex conceptual reasoning like this demo. This is particularly true of voice, where converting everything you say into text loses a lot of that nuance, the emotionality, even the pronunciation. In contrast to ChatGPT, which uses Whisper for that initial text transcription step, Gemini can reason about the raw audio signal end to end. So it can pick up those differences in nuance, inflection, and pronunciation. Duolingo AI, anyone? It's gonna be wild. As we saw, Gemini is able to simultaneously process information from three modalities, audio, vision, and text. We believe that enabling Gemini to listen to the source audio will help us continue to expand its capabilities and make it more helpful to people. Again, I just think we're scratching the surface the type of use cases true multimodal AI actually enables. And gosh, if you think about it, historically you needed all these task-specific models that are sort of individually tuned to work in concert that adds a lot of complexity. Now you'll have this like ground up multimodal model to work with. As a developer, that's gonna be very, very exciting. Now Gemini has three models, large, medium, small. Small is obviously for on-device, the large one is the beefy one, that is the GPT-4 class one. And initial tests show that 32COT Gemini is already outperforming GPT-4. 
GPT-4 in many competitive tests. The middle of the pack Pro model is already live and barred today with GPT 3.5 performance. So in my opinion, if you need like a free large language model, there's no need to use chat GPT free anymore. I think GPT four, if you pay for the plus subscription is still better, but if you're talking free, both Claude and Bard are gonna do a better job today. Now on device is cool too, but it's that larger GPT four ultra model that I really wanna get my hands on. Needless to say, there's a little bit of controversy of like how Google ran these tests, but if you dig into the paper, they've done all the comparisons fair and square. Needless to say, the proof is in the pudding. We got some well-curated demos. I get it. Google didn't wanna point this stuff at the world. The real world is messy, but we need to get hands-on and see this stuff in the wild. But either way, multimodality is here to stay. This is where we'll see our next set of gains on this timeless quest to achieve AGI. Hold on to your seats, y'all. 2024 is going to be a wild ride. And yes, I guess I'll be holding on to that Google stock for a while longer. I hope you enjoyed this. I want to keep this very quick and timely because, gosh, there is so much else happening and so much else to cover. Um, I'll be back to regular programming schedule very, very soon. But I hope you enjoy this. And if you did, be sure to drop a like, drop a comment on what you'd like to see next. What do you think? Is Google back in the game or is this just a bunch of smoke and mirrors? Whether you're jaded or optimistic, I want to hear what you have to say. And I will see y'all in the next one.